So, the age-old debate of is the universe real or fake? I feel like this debate is going to go on till the end of time. But if we ever, ever get the opportunity, bro, to be in a, a space shuttle and going up to space to where people can see, I want to be on that space shuttle. If we're forced now, I'm not getting on there voluntarily. <laughs> if we're forced, I want to be on there with the non-believers just so I can see their face when they see that it's real. But like I said, this is a debate that's going to continue. So this video here continues that debate. Astronomers have given up. The universe is not real. We're going to check it out. If you're new, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Join the fam. Here we go. Are we an illusion or is the universe real? This question has plagued both philosophers and later scientists from essentially the dawn of human intelligence. There have been many interpretations over time that challenge the reality of our universe. Some say we are part of a dream. Some say that we are acting out a pre-written story, like a theatrical play or a movie. And some believe that we are in a game-like simulation. And then there is also the philosophical question, what even is reality? According to three scientists... Go watch The Matrix. <laughs> I, I wanted, I've been trying to do it, man, and I've been watching it because I don't have much time, so I've been watching it in chunks, and plus nobody else in here wants to watch it with me. But, I, I mean, The Matrix, a video game, uh, um, a dream... These are all different types of things people say as to whether or not the universe is real or not. It's crazy. What even is reality? According to three scientists, the reality is perhaps different from the universe we live in. True. This year's Nobel Prize winners, John Clauser, Alan Aspect, and Anton Zillinger, are responsible for usurping the concept of reality in our universe, as we have long acknowledged it. Welcome to Fact Nomeno, and today we are asking, have astronomers given up? Is the universe not real? What is reality? Or is the universe we live in not real? The magnitude of how big our universe is can be unbelievably daunting. And it may make you wonder if something so magnanimous exists for real. The James Webb Space Telescope is peering into various periods of our universe by simply catching photons, and a lot of what it shows does seem like a fantasy. And that's why I say I can't really knock nobody for having their thoughts or their beliefs. You know what I mean? Because some of these images that come back, i.e. from the James Webb, you look at them, bro, and it could look like something from a dream. It could look like something from a video game. It could look like something that's just completely and utterly not real. It gives off that illusion, bro. But I just, I just, ah, I just can't sit here and be like, it's not, man. It's just way too many things going on and happening that prove itself. And plus all the data that we have. But I can't knock anybody for saying that it isn't. Photons and a lot of what it shows does seem like a fantasy. Facts. Moreover, if the universe is so big, and there are perhaps trillions of planets out there, how come we haven't found life anywhere else? For several years, physicists and philosophers have been debating the consequences of the empirical violation of Bell's inequality. The physicists that? argue that the empirical violation of Bell's inequality proves that the world is non-local, and thus perhaps the special theory of relativity is wrong. Philosophers propose that this conflict can be avoided by giving up a realistic interpretation of quantum mechanics. But what does the phrase, the world is non-local, mean? Right. In physics terms, being real means that objects have definite properties, even when they are not being observed. A tree can still make a sound if it falls in the woods, despite that there is no one there to hear it. A strawberry can still be red, even when no one is looking at it. As Albert Einstein once famously stated to his friend, do you really believe the moon is not there when you are not looking at it? That's what I'm saying too. Like, what is that we walk outside and see at night? That's lighting up the sky. What is that? That's not real. So that's something that's what projected to the sky every night, same time, different places. 
just just in different locations. I'm, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, explain that. They ask you some great questions. You really believe the moon is not there when you are not looking at it? Being local means objects can only be influenced by their surroundings, and no influence can travel faster than the speed of light. A supernova exploding 100 billion light years away can't scare a bird into flight, but the roar of a tiger nearby can. However, there is a problem with these two concepts. Studies in quantum physics have led to the conclusion that both of these phenomena cannot be true. There is a third concept in classical physics called causality. That means that things don't happen randomly. They follow the chain of other things happening before them. A person who is walking in the park will not fall just all of a sudden. There has to be a reason for their tumble, such as them tripping, being pushed by someone, or perhaps slipping on a banana peel. For event B to occur, event A needs to happen. Mm -hmm. However, quantum functions have implied that one of these three concepts is not true. But here's the tricky part. We have no idea which of these is fake. It's the mystery of all space and time, and the answer lies in quantum entanglement. Why do I feel like Morpheus is talking to me right now? <laughs> I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through it. <laughs> I told y'all I've been watching it lately, man. And I feel like this dude with these questions and different way he's he's phrasing things is saying those same type of riddles Morpheus was giving up. Space and time, and the answer lies in quantum entanglement. The simplest explanation of quantum entanglement could be that aspects of one particle of an entangled pair depend on aspects of the other particle, no matter how far apart they are or what lies in between them. The easiest analogy of such a pair would be socks. A left sock is always paired with a right one, otherwise something won't feel right. Isn't that true? These subatomic particles could be electrons, photons, or any other similar particles, and by aspect it is referring to the state it is in, such as whether it is spinning in one direction or another. The weird thing about quantum entanglement is that measuring a trait of one particle in an entangled pair would also reveal some information about the other particle immediately, even if there are millions of light years of the distance separating them even if they are at opposite edges of the universe. One particle can reveal something about the other one. But how? Albert Einstein famously called this phenomenon spooky action at a distance, because this strange connection between two particles breaks a fundamental law of physics. In a complete theory, there is an element corresponding to each element of reality. A sufficient condition for the reality of a physical quantity is the possibility of predicting it with certainty without disturbing the system. Einstein and other contemporary famed scientists, Podolsky and Rosin, criticized quantum mechanics in 1935. They stated that a particle predicting something about its pair in entanglement over a considerable distance accurately every time is absurd. The odds of doing so even 200 times in a row would be 1 in 10 to the power of 60, which is a number greater than all the atoms in our solar system. This seems to suggest that the particles communicate with each other through some means that move faster than the speed of light. But according to the laws of physics, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. For now, we're working on that though. For now, you know what I mean? For now, y'all you, you can keep saying that, but... I got faith in us. We're going to figure something out. Surely the measured state of one particle cannot instantaneously determine the state of another particle at the far end of the universe. To many scientists, it seems that something was missing in these calculations. They theorized that some hidden variables determine the state of a particle before measurement. And this is where Irish physicist John Bell comes in. Bell created an equation that is now known as Bell's inequality, which led to the experiments conducted by John Clauser, Alan Aspect, and Anton Zellinger. Different interpretations. The mystery of us and the rest of the universe being real hinges on the three concepts called locality, causality, and realism, and finding out which of them is an illusion. 
It is because although pairing two of these three makes sense, adding the third concept without removing one of them from the mix breaks the wheel. There have been different interpretations of quantum physics that have tried to answer this question. According to David Bohm, locality must be the illusion because there must be a predetermined script for the functionality of the universe. And that means something that is not local must be affecting the state of a particle. Copenhagen's interpretation suggests that realism must be false because the universe is indeed not exactly determined until observed. Then there is the many worlds theory that determines... But like he said, with the moon, even though you're not seeing it or looking at it, does that not mean it's still there? I mean, it's the same analogy because the universe is indeed not exactly determined until observed no no then there is the many worlds theory no. that determines causality as an illusion because there has to be an infinite number of universes and every possibility occurs at the same time in separate universes the experiments conducted by physics nobel laureates of 2022 conclusively ruled out the existence of hidden variables, a mysterious attribute that would predetermine the states of entangled particles. This means that realism doesn't work locally. Moreover, there is also no conflict with special relativity, which forbids faster-than-light communication. It implies that Copenhagen's interpretation is the most likely possibility and realism is an illusion. But that doesn't shut doors for David Bohm's interpretation either, as there was a slight limitation to these experiments conducted by the three scientists. The experiments were conducted and observed locally, so until we can be sure, say locality is not an illusion, there is a decent chance that we may be living in a simulated universe. A pre-written fate is awaiting all of us, and as Shakespeare once said, we are only acting out our parts written by someone else. As, I know some of us don't want to hear that, but that could very well be true as well, man. You know what I mean? We're acting out our parts that was for a script that was already written. Already written. A beginning, a middle, and an end. You know what I'm saying? And I know here lies where a lot of religious people dwell. You know what I'm saying? This is this is what what the belief is. So that's why I say it. that's that's the complicated thing. You know, where do you fall on things? But these scientists have proved that the many worlds interpretation is not true, and causality is real. Nothing happens without a reason. And there is no alternate universe solely existing just so your alternate self can make exactly opposite decisions as you do. So it is safe to say that the universe is not locally real. Still, it begs the question, does the state of the universe depend on our observation? If there was no one to observe it, would the universe not exist? Are we humans really that important for the existence of the universe? Or does the universe exist only in our heads? And I don't think the humans are that important to the universe. I don't I don't think the, the mere size, I think, tells us that, you know what I mean? And as well, when we're able to get outside of the universe, I think that's going to be I think we're going to learn so much more. And we're going to realize that it is just so much more to this thing than, than we know it. I feel like now we're just scratching the surface of things, NASA included, physicists included. I think we've just scratched the surface. I think outside of that, like he showed up, the role of universes is just, it being, I think it'll be a lot more that we discover. And if so, what are we then? Also, if observance is proof of existence, can we say the things we hallucinate or imagine could be real as well? It seems we are still very far from knowing the truth. But the Thanks. research done by these exceptional scientists has brought us one step closer to that truth. Tell us in the comments if you feel sure about you being real or not. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for- That's a good question. How do y'all feel about that? How do you feel?
Is it real? Is it not real? Are we in a simulation or a video game or a dream state? Where do you fall on that? What are your thoughts? And I'm talking not just, I'm not talking to the trolls. I'm talking about the real ones that are here seeking information, gathering information, data, and evaluating it for themselves. You know what I mean? No answer is right because we don't have all the answers. But y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you thought and think of this. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.